was beautiful. It is now time for our Bible study, and it will be conducted by our pastor, Reverend Jackson. We certainly are glad to be uh, in the house of the Lord one more time. And what a beautiful morning um, this was, or is, I should say. I, um, I got up this morning and I put my hat on, my gloves on, and my, uh, my uh, thermal undergarments. Um, and then I realized uh, it wasn't that type of day today. <laughs> And so I quickly had to run back in the house and, and get to do a quick change. Um, but what a beautiful day. I'm, I'm, I thought I was getting used to this Northwest Indiana weather. Um, you know, on the East Coast where I'm from, once, it, uh, uh, once the weather changes, it changes. And we don't have this uh, back and forth, uh, snow, rain, sunshine, hot, cold, and all kinds of stuff. But I'm, I'm getting used to it. Um, but certainly we're just glad that we're able to feel the weather uh, that lets us know that we are uh, alive and we are, and we are kicking <laughs> and moving about, about our being. All right, so um, this morning, uh, our lesson this week has been on, uh, is on, uh, no one is, uh, is righteous. Yeah, and I think this is a very relevant uh, title, statement, if you will, um, that uh, we all need to hear and reflect on um, that even when we think we're perfect, we're not. Right? Uh, when we think we have it together, we really don't have it all together. And so the Apostle Paul reminds us uh, in the book of Romans of this as he looks into uh, the, uh, the society, the Roman uh, society uh, dealing with the Jews and the Gentiles. Um, and we just a little backdrop, we know that the Jews are the chosen people of God uh, and uh, they carry and follow the law that was laid uh, for them. And, uh, and so when they mess up, it's like, uh-oh, you all know, ought to know better, all right? Uh, and then uh, this uh, Gentile uh, community uh, that were not necessarily governed by the law like the Jews were, uh, but yet uh, God still held them accountable as well. You know, uh, the consciousness, um, and we're going to talk about that Bible study and sermon this morning. Um, but the consciousness of their mind, their being, even when you don't know the law, uh, there's something within you that tells you if you're doing right or not or something doesn't feel right or not. It's the, it's the consciousness within us that says, well, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Um, and so that eats, uh, eats at us. And I would submit to us that, uh, that, that the, the consciousness part of us um, you know, comes with uh, the role of Holy Spirit uh, in our lives, right? You, you know when you have a relationship with God and, and there uh, not only is a relationship with God, but uh, you know that uh, there's Jesus in you when you know when, something, when you do something wrong or, uh, or you did a wrong thought or what have you, something eats at you, right? Um, makes you have to go back and apologize to the person that you don't want to apologize to. But you do it, why? Because there's something within that says, ah, I didn't handle that right, or I didn't do that right, let me fix it, right? And so um, that's what the Apostle Paul is really getting at in this uh, passage of scripture. Our, um, our PowerPoint is up, and, uh, and so let's look at the next slide. Uh, I'm gonna look at this, as far as this introduction piece, 
with Romans uh, chapter 1, which we went over, verses 18 and 32, just to uh, quickly, um, uh, to quickly highlight uh, a couple of things uh, as it sets up this passage of scripture that we're dealing with, uh, with Romans chapter 3. Uh, verses 9 to 20. But before we go there, we always like to read the, the, the passage of Scripture. So let's get uh, two readers. If one can read Romans chapter 3, verses 9 to 14, and a second reader to read verses 15 to 20. We have a first reader, okay. Um, uh, and do we have a second reader that would read? Okay. Um, I said so, so I should read the second one. Okay, let's read uh, those that are online and listening. Again, we are Romans chapter 3 verses 9 through 20, and we're going to read that together. Go ahead. First reading. Romans chapter 3, verses 9 through 14. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongue they have used deceit. The poison of apps is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. All right, second reader. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay. All right, so uh, let's look at this introduction piece, um, Romans chapter 1, and I have it on the screen. Those that are viewing can see it as well. Um, and so um, Apostle Paul talked about God's wrath against mankind as the Gentile world in Paul's day was utterly uh, corrupt. And so a part of this um, uh, book of Romans, he starts out particularly where he says in chapter 1, uh, that we all too are, to, are becoming saints. Um, and so when Paul says that in chapter 1, um, he doesn't say that they are saints. He says we are becoming, right? And so every day we're striving to be, um, to be the saints, right? Um, and so there's a, there's a progress. There's working on something. Each of us have to work on ourselves. And that's what part of this whole Lenten season is about, is reflection and one being able to reflect over oneself and work on oneself, right? Uh, and so humanity originally knew about the true God, but then they rose, uh, chose rather to reject him and began worshiping gods of their own kind or their own making, right? Uh, the power of sin becomes great in our lives when uh, we cannot rescue ourselves from the stronghold of sin. Every part of our being and every human institution has been affected by sin. And so when we realize that all around us, uh, our world in which we live, uh, the reality is there's sin. Sin is there, right? Um, and therefore, the question is, if that's the reality in which we live, how do we begin to handle ourselves in a world that's full of sin, right? Full of darkness. Uh, doesn't mean all people are evil, but rather sin has uh, per pervasively affected every aspect of humanity. We're going to go to the next slide. Um, you may want to, uh, you know, write this down and jot it down. Uh, but 1 John chapter 1, uh, verses 8 to 10, um, talks about the light and darkness, talks about sin and forgiveness. And so it's in this passage of Scripture, uh, this is the message we have heard from him and declared to you, God is light. And so we talk about 
living in a world of sin, living in a world of darkness, a world of chaos, and, you know, there's murder, there's violence, there's anger, there's a whole lot going on in our world today. Um, and if darkness is around us, then the question is, where is the light? Who is the light, right? Um, we as the body of Christ, we as the believers, uh, we ought to represent the light of Christ. Christ, Jesus, is the light of the world. Therefore, when he created us, we are created to be a, a beacon of light that represents who he is. And so 1 John chapter 1 and uh, verse 5 uh, starts out with that. It says, God is, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all, which makes sense because if you, I never turned on a light and saw darkness, right? <laughs> if you do, let me know. I want to come over and see that. But anytime I've experienced waking up in the middle of the night and, you know, I have my little snack time, don't judge me, my little ice cream and cake and a little syrup on the top, you know, and, um, and I, I, sometimes I regret it later, but I thank God for it at the moment, um, and I work it out in the gym. Uh, but, but to get to my bedroom to the kitchen, I got to turn on the light. Matter of fact, you know, I, I don't know if this is old school or what, you tell me, but I have my little night lights all around the, around, the, around the house and stuff, around the hallway, down the hallway, by the kitchen, everywhere I go. And so when I do go to bed and wake up, I still see images because I got the night light on. Not that I'm afraid of the dark, it's just that I don't want to bump into nothing, right? Uh, because, you know, when you wake up, it's like you got to get your bearings, right? You got to figure out, okay, now where am I? <laughs> where am I going? Uh, but... Turning on the light, you know, eliminates the darkness. You know, and, and if you're um, available on Tuesday night, I'm doing a, um, a, a lecture for uh, a church in um, uh, uh, Second, um, Second Missionary Baptist Church in Kokomo, Indiana. Um, they're doing, uh, they're having a, a, a week of uh, Christian um, uh, instruction and um, and I'm, I'm the second night presenter, and, uh, and the topic for the week is being the light, all right? And so if you're available, you can go onto their website. It'll be broadcast on their website. It's Second uh, Missionary Baptist Church, uh, Kokomo, Indiana, and, um, and you can certainly um, be a part of that, uh, that teaching. But I'll be teaching about this, this, you know, the same thing about the light and darkness. And so God is light in him, there is no darkness at all because he is the light. Verse 6 says in, uh, in 1 John chapter 1, it says, If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, the writer says, we lie and do not live out the truth. Right? And so if we're going to be in Christ, then we ought to present ourselves with the light of Christ. And, um, and one, uh, the writer is indicating that uh, when we are uh, walking in darkness uh, then, and, and claim to be the light. That's not, right? We claim to be the light. So therefore, we can, what we say has to match up with what we're doing. And that's literally what, what's, what, what's being said there. What we say is matching up what we're doing. And so therefore, um, he says that we're not living out, here it is, the truth. The truth there in, in the Greek literally means the revealing, the reality, one, one, the uncovering right, um, of, of one's reality. Verse 7 says, but if we walk in light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin, right? And so we are, we are, we are in fellowship with one another as we are in the light of Christ uh, together, right? We walk together uh, in the light. Uh, what's that hymn around Christmas time we usually sing it? Um, Hark the herald angels sing Jesus the light over the world and the chorus says walk in the light, right? Beautiful light, right? Um, and so we are people that walk uh, in the light. Verse 8 says, and if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And so again, the, gospel, the writer is indicating that if we uh, we have to have the reality of we are in this world and we are, uh, and around us uh, is sin and around us uh, is this disaster, this destruction, um, and we'll kid ourselves 
if we realize or uh, we don't think that, we can sometimes fall short um, of the glory of God. All right, let's go to the next slide. It says, all are under sin. And that's what Paul is trying to relay to the believers and the Jews. It's not, you know, it's not just the Gentiles. Y'all looking at the Gentiles because they're not circumcised and, and, um, and circumcision was a part of uh, the cultural piece uh, in identifying when one uh, it has become, if you will, saved, okay? Um, and so when we look at, um, Paul is saying, you can't judge the Gentiles because they don't do what you do, uh, Jews, um, but, but all, you know, are in this together. All are participating in this. All are under, under sin. And so the Jewish were proud of their heritage. They were, um, they were God's chosen people. And you can look at Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. And, oh, that is real small up there. I apologize for that. Uh, but it says, now if you obey me, fully keep my uh, covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasure, treasured possessions, although the whole earth is mine. That's Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. The Jews felt superior uh, to the Gentiles due to their ancestors being faithful to God. Their ancestors included priests and prophets, and the history uh, proves many uh, miracles that came from God for and towards the people, uh, the Jewish people. So they felt favored. And when you feel favored, you feel special. You know, we all feel special. I mean, I don't feel too special this morning because most of y'all got green on. Y'all didn't give me the memo. <laughs> A Jew uh, who uh, breaks God's law is guilty, even more guilty than, uh, than the Gentile. And why would you think that? Why, why would the Jews be more guilty uh, than the Gentiles, do you think? Because the Jews were the one who said they knew the law and they studied the law. Yeah. And the Gentiles did not follow that law. Yeah. So, so the Jews, they knew it. So if you, if you know something, then you ought to do better, right? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, compared to someone that, didn't, that doesn't know, you know, that... Not saying they're totally out, out of it, right, because they didn't know. I mean, when I got in trouble, my mom would say, well, you knew better because you're the oldest. I'm like, oh, I hate being the oldest. <laughs> um, but then look at my brother or my sister, particularly my brother, he's a, he was the youngest, and, uh, and then she'd be like, oh, okay, well, she, he'll, she'll discipline him still, right, because he did, still did wrong, but yet uh, I got more of the wrath when I got in trouble because I was the oldest and I knew better. Um, and so, same here in this instance where the Jews knew better, and even if the Gentiles didn't know, they still had the responsibility and accountability uh, as well. Uh, let's look at the next slide, uh, the depths of human sin, right? And this is in verses uh, 12 through 18, that all people are guilty as sinners. We all are sinners. And, uh, and there's another passage of scripture that says we are sinners but we are saved by grace, right? Um, and so therefore, no believer should think we're high and holy than anybody else because every one of us is in the same bucket. But the fact of the matter is, what makes us different from the world is that we, we have accepted Christ. We are saved by him. And so therefore, there's a covering of, uh, that's over our lives. And so even when we do step out of the ark of safety, you know, uh, there is uh, that, that conscience and the spirit of God that's within us that pulls us right back in and we get ourselves right back together again. Every human, every human language has words that are vulgar and blasphemous, all right? And so, um, you know, when we talk about uh, the depths of sin, you know, um, our mouths can get us in trouble. Amen. And today we have taken um, to uh, expressing our cruelty and our wickedness with our, finger, uh, our fingers uh, as, um, as, we, uh, as we post things online. And so we look at this whole, um, this new generation of, of, of Facebook and, and Instagram and everything that's out there. Um, now, how many of you have social media pages? Okay, majority of us have them, okay. You know, now, particularly Facebook, and I'll, just, I'll mention that, you know, that, that was really meant, the intention was for people to be able to connect with one another that you don't see often. That, that's the intent of Facebook. 
uh, to be able to uh, connect with a family member or a friend or someone that you haven't seen in a while and, you know, and they can kind of keep up with you. Uh, that was the intent. But now, these days, what was intentional <laughs> is turned to be totally something else, right? And now you see folks cussing each other out and fussing at each other. Uh, one of my cousins, um, one of my friends and cousins this morning uh, uh, woke me up at 3, 4 o'clock this morning uh, because uh, there's some kind of rivalry going on um, and because somebody posted something, you know, on, uh, on Facebook. And now everybody's waking up, drying their eyes, looking at their cell phones. It's like, wait a minute, <laughs> what's going on here? And, uh, but you realize in that, that you know, there's, there's bullying and there's the argument that's going back and forth, right? Um, on social media, not only between the individuals, then everybody else in the world that's what? That's watching it, right? That's, that's embracing it, um, that's listening to it, watching it, reading it, all right? Most of us are not criminals, uh, but our hearts are still full of sinful desires, and that's what Paul is dealing with in verses 12 to 18. Um, we often fail to show love and compassion to those in need instead of empathy, uh, we show uh, apathy at, uh, at the, at the at plight of others. Uh, and so we have to be careful when we talk about these depths of, of human sin that we have to know ourselves, right? Know ourselves enough to know when somebody presses our button, we know what we have the potential of doing or saying, right? Or reacting or responding. And so um, even as, as a kid growing up, uh, you know, I had anger management issues. No, Pastor, you didn't. Yes, I did. I mean, you just looked at me the wrong way, said something to me the wrong way. I was going from zero to 100 in one, one quick minute, one quick second. Uh, but as you grow up, right, uh, and as I grew, I had to come to reality that just because someone says something to me doesn't mean I have to go off, right? Uh, there's a sense of having control over the situation and the control of yourself in the situation. So I never have to go back and say, you know what, I really acted a fool, right? Uh, I really lost control of myself. And I never give anyone the power over me to lose control over myself, right? I control what I say, I control what I do, I control the actions, right? And so going around and getting angry and upset and, and going from zero to 100, punching, wall, punching holes in the wall and stuff like that, what did that resolve? Not, not one thing but my hand hurting, <laughs> right? Um, and so when we think about um, the whole notion of, you know, uh, how do we handle ourselves in whatever uh, predicament or situation we find our, ourselves, ourselves in. Uh, the next slide I think we all can see uh, is uh, all are accountable to God. I'm really gonna talk more about this uh, in uh, the sermon, but um, for the purposes of our study this morning, I do wanna highlight a couple of things because in verse 19 and 20, um, and it reads, um, now we know that what things soever the law saith, it says to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Verse 20, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin, right? Knowledge of sin by the law, right? Uh, where the law is, then there's knowledge of sin. All right. Since the Jews uh, possessed God's law, they were held accountable for breaking it, right? We already indicated that um, the, the Gentiles um, possessed no such uh, uh, divinely given code. Their consciousness, however, were enough to make them aware of God's standards of right and wrong. And that's uh, Romans chapter 2, verses 14 and 16. This is what it says. And, um, and so, indeed, um, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law. They are a law of themselves. Even though they do not have the law, verse 15 says, they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, right? Um, their consciousness also 
bearing witness and their thoughts sometimes accusing them and at other times even defending them. Verse 16, this will take place on the day when God, judge, uh, when God judges people's secret, secrets through Jesus Christ as the gospel declares. Scripture meaning that both are held accountable to God, what, for their sin. All right, so you want to make sure uh, you jot that, uh, that passage of scripture down as well. And so it's one thing to be held accountable, you know, to one another, right? Uh, but it's a whole other thing to be held accountable to God, right? And when you've been held accountable, when we're accountable, try to be held accountable to one another, I mean, you can fool, you can fool each other, right? Because right? we're not there 24-7. We're not around each other 24-7. But who's on the throne 24-7? Right? Right. And so when you hold yourself accountable to God, it's a higher standard, then you will be able to control yourself, you know, even when you, you do wrong or go in the wrong direction, right, your conscience starts to begin to think, okay, God, I know you're watching me. I know I, I know I probably shouldn't have done that or said that, you know, I shouldn't have went there. I shouldn't have went that far, right? Um, but something within us knows how to pull us back, right? Um, and so we want to uh, certainly thank God for um, holding us uh, accountable. And sometimes God will hold us accountable uh, by uh, creating circumstance in our lives, right? We want to be big and bad and be on our own. I, I remember when I was young, I couldn't wait to be an adult. I'm like, are you kidding me? I couldn't wait to be free, do what I want to do, go where I want to go, drive where I want to drive, right? Spend my own money. Can't tell me what to do with my money. I'm going to spend my money where I want to spend it now. I'm grown. Oh, how I wish to go back to those days <laughs> where I didn't have a care in this world. Mama took care of things, and grandparents took care of things, and you know, I didn't have to worry about bills. And what? I got to go to work? Huh? I'll take school for 100, Alex. <laughs> right? So, you know, it's, 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 it's thinking about how sometimes anxious we want to be, right, and, and where we want to go. Uh, in life and what we want to be in life, uh, but to also know that there's responsibility that comes with it, right? Um, and then there's accountability that comes with it, no matter how old or how young <clears throat> we are. Um, the next slide says, what does scripture say about humanity being accountable for their sins to humanity? And so there's accountability to God and there's accountability to each other. And so Romans chapter 14, you may want to uh, jot this down as well, Romans 14 and 12, this is how we are accountable to one another. And so Romans 14 and 12 says, Though, uh, so then each of us will give an account of himself uh, to God, All right? Uh, Galatians uh, chapter 5, 1 through 5 says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual, not religious, but spiritual should, what? Restore him in a spirit of gentleness. That's a hard thing for us to do, right? When we hold ourselves accountable to each other, when someone uh, is, is, is uh, doing wrong or when someone is kind of out there, we like to point the finger, right? We like to cast judgment. But we who are spiritual, that's what, uh, Paul is saying to the church of, of, of Galatia. Those of us are spiritual, he says, that you should restore. Restore means to what? To bring back. Right. Don't let them go out there and just point the finger, but go out there and get them and help them to bring back. Now it's up to them if they want to be restored or not, right? if they want to come back or not, if they want to change their lives or not, right? But we who are spiritual are, have the responsibility and accountability for one another to reach out and bring the person back to the fold. All right. It says, keep watch on yourself, lest you be tempted. Bear uh, another's burdens, right? And so fulfill the law of, of Christ. And so there's a couple of things in there, is that as you are helping someone to be restored back, those of us who are spiritual, you got to be careful, too, because Satan is there, too, to kind of destroy and to take us as well. And so we got to make sure we're strong enough in the faith to be able to 
restore someone and, and keep our own sanity. <laughs> Ain't that something, right? We could help somebody uh, else and, and try to bring them up, and yet we find ourselves just as crazy as them, right? right? Because we, we, put, we put ourselves and allowed ourselves to be pulled into their reality. There's some stuff, I look over the years, that had nothing to do with trying to help somebody, and now I find myself in it, right? But we have to be, you know, uh, careful is what the, 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 um, the writer is saying. Uh, and then bear one of those burdens, right? And so if I see a burden on you, to help you with the burden, not to say, it's going to be all right, keep on praying. Keep on trusting God. I think we say enough of that, those cliches. God's going to work it out. Yeah, he's going to work it out, but sometimes God uses us to help someone to help them work it out. All right? Um, next part of Galatians, it says, uh, For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then by his reason, then, and then, his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear uh, his own load. All right, let's look at the next slide, uh, which says, what the scriptures say about humanity being accountable of their sins, again, to humanity. There's a couple other scriptures I'm gonna give out to you as well. Uh, you got James chapter uh, five, verse 16. Uh, Therefore confess with your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person has great power as it is working. All right, James 5 and 16, confess your sins one to another. Now that's also difficult to do, right? Uh, to, to, to tell someone about your weaknesses or vulnerabilities, uh, that's a big trust, right? You have to trust somebody uh, to be able to do that because some folk will take your, your personal struggles and put it out there and, and cause, um, cause you to, you know, be pulled down, you know, uh, make a fool out of you, if you will. And there are those who are generally concerned about your weaknesses and, and your struggles in life and want to be there for you and help pray that God can help turn that around. So that's what James 5 and 16 uh, is saying. Uh, confess your sins to one another, but find someone you trust to be able to let the Lord lead you in that, to be able to uh, confess what's going on within you so that uh, you have a prayer partner or an intercessor or someone to help you uh, with those things so that you can be, and the, and the word in that scripture is healed. Uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, 5 and 11, Therefore encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. And so Paul tells uh, the church and the people of Thessalonica uh, that you ought to come together and you ought to encourage one another and build one another up. I, over the years, have put people out of my life that are not in the interest of building me up and as I build them up. Right? Don't waste my time. Don't come around me and waste my time if you don't want to be built up, right? or if you don't want to build me up. Right? And so part of what Paul is saying is that as we come together as a body of believers, we're coming together to build one another up, right? not to tear one another down. Right? And so, and I think we as a black race, particularly, uh, we do a good job <laughs> in tearing each other down, right? And not supporting one another. Uh, I think about uh, so many different black businesses that could be so successful, but we don't support it, right? We don't support our own, but we'll go all the way out to another whole city and a whole other state uh, and support another uh, demographics, another culture, and rather uh, the same resource that is, uh, is given uh, we don't even support our own communities. Matthew chapter 12, uh, 36 and 37, it says, it, I tell you, uh, on the day of judgment, people will give account of every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be ju justified, and by your words, you will be uh, condemned. And so uh, Matthew chapter 12 um, is uh, relaying uh, to us uh, about how um, uh, as far as what we say, uh, how those words uh, can certainly um, be um, condemned uh, by the Lord. Luke chapter 17 and 33, this is the last one I'll give you, is pay attention to yourself. If your brother, uh, if your brother uh, sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. 
All right, this is what talks about a whole level of, 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 of repentance and forgiveness, uh, which is another hard word and, and thing to do is, is forgive, particularly when someone has, um, has done something towards you. But what Luke, the writer, is indicating, which I love this piece, is pay attention to yourself, right? Pay attention to yourself. And that's what we're doing in the season of Lent, is looking at ourselves and, um, and looking at what are the things that we need to fix with us. You know, it could be you mean, bad attitude, it could be. It could be, um, you know, whatever it is that we struggle with, you know, I'm going to reflect over my own life and decide what I need to change so I could be a better person. All right, the last um, slide is the closing of the lesson, and there is the facts, the principles, and then the application. And so the facts is what we've learned today is to study Paul's teachings that all of humanity is unrighteous before God. And so that's the facts, right? And so I always tell people, don't just give me, you know, when I'm teaching my, with my students, don't just give me all this fluff. Give me some factual stuff, right? Give me, give me some meat, right? So the fact of this lesson is that uh, humanity is unrighteous before God. Principle, uh, to understand that in God's eyes, no one can claim to be righteous, all right? And then the application, now we've learned this, what do we do, how do we apply it to our lives, and we apply it, uh, the application is to be aware of our sinfulness and to give thanks for God's grace uh, in, uh, in Jesus Christ, all right? That's the application. Okay, any questions? Any, we have a, just a minute or two before we close. All right, so we learned that you're not perfect. Somebody asked you, what did you learn in Bible study today? I learned I wasn't perfect. <laughs> but we serve a perfect, perfect, perfect God. Uh, let's look at our next uh, week's lesson uh, for those that are, don't have the Sunday School book and are on um, the um, or on our um, website. Okay, so next week we're going to still be in the book of Romans, chapter 3, but we're going to look at the next 10 uh, passages of Scripture, which is um, verses 21 to 31. So it's going to be Romans, chapter 3, verses 21 to 31 uh, will be the lesson for next week. And the title of the lesson is uh, Righteousness Through Faith. All right, so we're going to look at righteousness um, through faith. Are we good? Okay, let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this time and that we shared together and we studied and took a glimpse in your word. We thank you, O oh Lord, for those that are in person. And Lord, we thank you for those that we're viewing. And God, we ask that the word continues to strengthen us and the word continue to uh, convict us, straighten us, and the word continues to comfort us as well. God, we thank you for all things, and we praise you in all things. And we ask that you are bless now as we transition to our 11 a.m. service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we'll see you next Sunday.